Season 6, episode 13, Stranger Than Fan Fiction. Okay. Alright, so uh, we open with a nice little bit of action with uh, the, you know, the daring do crossing the, the thin, flimsy rock bridge. Which it seems to me that if you are unsure of the bridge at all, flying would be a better idea. You have wings. I mean, if you. Yeah, Pegasus. Earth... Yeah. They don't think three Pegasi dimensional. seem to forget. Yeah, they don't yeah, think three Pegasi dimensional. Pegasus seem to forget they have wings. Yeah, it would be one thing if she, if she was an Earth pony and she had to, you know, had to be careful with it. But, like, she's a freaking Pegasus. Think three dimensionally for once. It's like space battles. It's well, like... I mean, she's just. Yeah. Yeah. It's like when you see a space battle, it's like, you do know you could have just flanked him the other way. You know, it's, it's three dimensional. <laughs> well, she is just a rainbow dash for your color. Which I'll come back to that in a second because I have something, uh, you know, uh, funny to go. Uh, okay. Uh, rainbow has. Twilight read to her. Why does she? Was the deal you read? I pack. I mean, I'm I'm guessing she's in there. It's to quickly excuse Twilight from attending. Hey, because you know that if she had the opportunity, she'd love to go go to it. But you know, this is a way to get Rainbow there without Twilight coming along as well. Um. But the you read I pack. I mean, why is she reading to her? That seems a bit odd. Unless it's like a brand. Well, new... probably because probably because it's like Rainbow Dash, and Rainbow Dash really does want to go, but at the same time, she's like really lazy. Well, I mean, she can read just fine. I mean, the, why are you having to read to to Rainbow? You know. Well, maybe reading to her like gives her more, more motivation to actually pack up. Yeah, she was trying to get her to pack, and it's like, but you know, I guess, but that seems a little imposing. But then again, Twilight can be a bit imposing with her, just organize already, sort of thinking. But um, that was a bit yeah. weird. That was a bit strange. I mean, that could have been carried off without the action opening I got but I guess that's the only way they could get um that to work out where they could I mean it could have been an easy throwaway line of it's too bad Twilight couldn't come because of that you know summit she had to go in Griffinstone which was a nice call back to you know the last season yeah um but yeah but that would be all you would need you know um, maybe she's, you know, the easier way to do it that would make a lot more sense to would be Rainbow Dash is at, you know, whatever bus stop or something. You know, there's a bus that, or waiting at the train station uh, to go to the convention and she's reading her book and then she's interrupt and that's how you get the action scene. And then you hear all aboard, you know, that sort of thing. And then you see her grab her stuff and run onto the train because she got so engrossed in her you book. All. She, could, she could you know that way she could just she could show she was engrossed in her book but you don't necessarily need twilight to say that and you could just say it's too bad twilight couldn't come along when she enters the convention that's it you know, you know yeah and you could have thrown the griffin stone even it, it, that would have been fine but you, it was a weird, awkward way of writing that. For me, anyway. Um, but Twy does have official duties now. She's actually doing stuff. As a, you know, princessy stuff. So, yes. Um, she's actually doing princessy stuff. She's, uh, she's, uh, she's playing her part. Uh, here's Just a smile weird... and wave. Yeah, more than more than smile and wave. I I hope. Um, a kind of a continuity kind of question. Okay, 
if the last adventure with Daring Do, I assume the book Twilight's Reading Tour is the newest one. If the last adventure with Daring Do was real, because there's some theories that, you know, there were some theories before this episode that she actually got conked on, when she got conked on, on the head at the beginning of the episode, the rest of the episode was just a dream. Uh, yeah, I was about to say that is. I was I was gonna make a joke that you know so many people's thing about this all that that episode being all a dream. Um, I bet they're feeling stupid now. Well, it was a hopeful thing because it was a little silly to make daring do a real pony, but that's my personal opinion. But anyway, if it if it's real, and it was made into a book, which I assume it was, given that she sent her a copy of it. I think towards the end of the episode wouldn't ponies be curious as to why a rainbow cosplayer is in a daring do outfit assuming that she included rainbow dash in her book yeah and wouldn't she be you know people know exactly who she is i mean yeah, element, wouldn't of harmony, like, element of harmony what? wouldn't look for her and go hey you're on that one book you know yeah yeah you're an element of harmony you're a Wonderbolt, and you're on. You're you're in the Daring Do book. She's living a high life, man. I mean, the fact that she isn't getting swarmed by fans is a little strange. <laughs> well, not yeah. a little strange. Yeah, but it's a little <clears throat> interesting that that it's it's kind of funny how ponies in Equestria have this kind of amnesia about the main six it's like who's that i don't know could be one of the people that well no save the world of numpteen time but uh. it's like this see celestia is kind of jealous of the main six and she doesn't want them to be praised all the time so she does the men in black mind wipe thing on all of equestria <laughs> that way they <laughs> always forget <laughs> Won't let you remember bears in black. <laughs> anyway. Although, admittedly, if that were to work, they should probably get rid of the window panes. But anyway. Yeah, <laughs> that is kind of an awkward reminder. But yeah, it does seem that they they tend to, you know, be forgotten. Except, that, except what was it, Traja? They remember to turn in. They were all up been seeing princess twilight They're like oh yes but then they forget again it's, it's very inconsistent but anyway uh the advent you know and kind of tacking onto that the adventucation experience please do you know who i am i'm the rainbow <gasps> dash bish my life is adventure <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just yesterday I saved the whole entire world from T-Rex. Okay, it's about maybe a month ago or a week ago. I don't really know the timing in Equestria. Yeah, there's there's so many things that make, you know, it's like she should be famous, but she's not. Yep. Anyway, uh, though I will say this. It makes sense that Quibble wouldn't make her as a character, wouldn't, you know, you know, recognize her as a character given that uh, she would be in a later book and he's only a fan of the original trilogy. So, I assume she's a later book um, because, you know, I think we've seen more than, uh, more than three books mentioned, like, or something uh, with the Daring Do series before this, so before she, before she becomes a part of the series, but yeah, uh, maybe she didn't. Maybe she just didn't make. Well, she did make it into a book, so I don't know. Maybe she just just thinks she's a very good, a very she's a very good cosplayer. <laughs> um, oh, this is that part I was gonna come back to with the palette swap bit. In this episode, they missed an opportunity to take advantage of the palette swap effect between Do and Dash. You know, 
that would have been an interesting way of taking taking advantage of it, considering if they felt both fell in the mud, you couldn't tell which one was which. Because they both have kind of magenta eyes and the same haircut, same main cut, same tail, same everything, about the same height. Everything is pretty much identical. It would be really hard to tell which one was which. Uh, if they were, you know, if they just like fell in some mud or something, or have uh, it'd be funny if it, or have Dash act as a gonna... decoy. Yeah, have her I was actually... gonna say it'd be funny if it turned out that her and Dash were like, um, like lost twin sisters. Yeah, yeah, she could. Yeah, they could. They could dye rainbows colors and have her go as. You know, have her be daring do, you know, fill in for daring do. Like, an interesting thing would be like she has to help daring do keep her secret. So she has, so AK Yearling has, you know, that way AK Yearling and daring do show up in the same spot at the same time. That way, you know, it's like, you know, that way people don't realize daring do is, you know. Is AK Yearling, you know? They wait. Derek Duke can be real, but not a, not AK Yearling. They they're seen in the same place at the same time. But that's just an odd thing. Uh, okay. Um, somebody actually knows how many a score is. Huzzah! Yay! It is twenty. That's four score and twenty years ago. Or was rough. What was it four score and seven years ago? So eighty-seven years ago, yeah. So I did had score in my head and twenty in my head, and it flipped it around. Yeah. Um. Uh, so yes. Uh, let the shipping begin, because you know any two characters who have any even even breathe the same air will be shipped. It's just quibble dash or rainbow pants. I ship this twig with this rock. Pretty much. I think there's even some shipping. There's been some kind of fun shipping of uh, boulder with. There's been some boulder tom shipping going on, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have seen some really saucy pics of that. So. Some hard rock porn. Uh. Anyway, yeah, I know. <laughs> we get the tied up daring do body pillow. It's a bit creepy. Um, yeah, but oddly normal. I think half this episode was the Brony fandom in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were. This was a. This was a take on some of the fandom. Um, I love the concession attendant. It was just like. Yeah. Making the drinks and whatnot, and she's like, she has the face of someone dealing with way too many overly exuberant fan ponies. It's like, yeah, yes, I yes, yes, I get it. You're excited. Yes, calm down. I'm, I'm freaking tired of this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I see one more, try and whip their whip their drink into their hand and spill it all over the place, I'm going to scream. <laughs> yes, and only Celestial will be able to save you. Yes. Um, Rainbow has to explain how she knows the stories are realistic. So, that's... Uh, that's a thing. Um... This picture says, Quibble Pants is literally a representation of every former MLP fan that quit watching after Twilight became an Alcorn. Yeah, that was where I was going with it next, even. It's, it's fan denial in action. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. After the first three books, I, I, you know, I, don't, I don't acknowledge their existence. <laughs> yes, I totally quit watching MLP. I'm just totally making all this up now. Check. Okay. 
let's see. Fan rage drives the two apart when they have so much in common. Uh, the way Dash kind of approaches the the welcome desk manager, she's a you know, it's like yeah, she's a crazy fan pony trying to get to a celebrity. I'm not going to even get close to talking about that with AK Yearling. Um, just I just want to snip it of her hair. Yeah. That that kind of <laughs> creepy, um, overly exuberant, you might say. Uh, she yells "AK" a little too loud. It's like, you know, I, I guess her public persona, what she looks like when she's dressed up as you know AK Yearling, is you know, that's you know that's that's public. People know what she looks like, but it is a little loud. You know, if you see some, if you saw a celebrity, you don't, you probably shouldn't yell it, you know, quietly. It's not such and such. It's like, yeah, that's cool, and we're moving on. Um, uh, which, yeah, she has better things to do with deal with the satisfied fan ponies. Yes. <laughs> I, I've got stuff to do than deal with your quibbling. Eh, 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 eh. Um, what I find interesting is we have all this sort of South and Central American inspired temples just kind of randomly dotted across Equestria so far. Where do they fit into the history of Equestria as a whole? Because they're definitely post sisters eh. because we saw you know the the room with the several. Uh, ponies, you know, the earth, you know, earth ponies. Yeah. Is, da, da, da. We saw Nightmare Moon. So, it's post sisters. It's at least within the last thousand years. Right now, I'm just going to call it convenient plot device. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was, yeah, she was, uh... yeah, I'm yeah, it's, it's, it's at least. You know, in the last about a thousand years, sometime in there, and yeah, I don't know exactly <laughs> where it fits in, but it seems odd given the kind of stylistic choices of most of Equestria. You don't really see a lot of, outside of these ancient temples, you don't see a lot of that style artwork. It's like, here's these abandoned temples. They have this style of artwork. Now we're going to go over here, and has none of that. You know, it's just not a thing. But, I mean, it's yeah. Central and South American to me. It may be, you know, there may be some other influences there as well, but it, it looks very Central and South American. Uh, let's see. Uh, Caballeron is disturbed by all the daring do stuff. I mean... You're basically walking to a room and your nemesis is being cheered at every, you know, be, being emulated in yeah. every corner of the room. And you're also being, you know, kind of copied around. It's like, really? I don't, I don't I look see the like that. Um, but see did the I give you permission? To use my likeness, where is my royalty fees? Well, you see, that's the thing. If he, ad you know, if he admits that he is really Caballeron, that makes him a criminal, and the Daring Do books as evidence. So that either makes him crazy, because they won't believe that the Daring Do books are real, and they'll think he's insane. Or, if they believe that they're true, they're going to lock him up. So, if he, you know, if he acknowledges that they're true, and I am the real Caballeron, fear me. Uh, guards, ponies, come over here. This guy's the real Caballeron. Oh, really? You know, they'll either, A, not take him seriously, more likely, or two, take him seriously and arrest him immediately. Yeah. For the kind of crimes. Yeah. Damn. So... 
AK Yearling so is an evil mastermind. I mean, so suing for that would be kind of, you know, you know, if it's if it's not true, it's just a book. You happen to share the same name and kind of the same likeness. Get over it. Or, you know, it's that's true and we should lock you up. All she has to do is provide any evidence that what her books do is true. And he's arrested immediately. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. The big hinge pony has a body pillow knocked off his back. That may explain why he's so incompetent, as it were. You know, air quote incompetent. Um, Rainbow Dash uses tail whip on Quibble. It isn't very effective. That's my... Yeah, I do like. The ta- I, I like the. I like the tail whip. I think that's a. I wish they would do that more because it's kind of a. It's a. It's a fun way of just kind of going. That no. Yeah, kind of flipping the bird off, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna hit you in the face with my tail. That's how little I think of you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. One thing. And now let us make sweet, sweet love in the bed. <laughs> um. We do see some there's some interesting things scattered about that don't make a lot of sense. I saw some cardboard. I saw at least one of them I, I could identify. And I think I saw some more that I didn't bother taking the chance to identify. But I think I saw more of them spread about. You remember back in last season's season five's Halloween episode. I uh, can't remember what it was called, but Fluttershy was, you know trying to scare her friends um that in her thing you know, the the unexpected guests and you had like all the anime cutouts our anime mm-hmm. cardboard cutouts some of those made an appearance they don't make any sense for a daring do con but they're there and they're giant compared to where they were before they just kind of reuse the assets as kind of things thrown around so I assume if I went back and rewatched even more, looking for those sorts of Easter eggs, I imagine they are scattered absolutely everywhere. If you if you looked at them a little more, but I know you can at least see those hanging around. Um, let's see what else is left. Oh, and I, something. Well, just the picture caught my eye in the set for a second. It's like I think they honestly try and do as many apple drinks and apple flavored things as possible because they have so many apple vectors I don't know, I'm not sure vectors, but so many apple assets already made, they're like, you know what make it apple what? we already have the assets throw it on there <laughs> apple, 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 apple apple, 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 each apple you buy is one more bit to the apple family yeah mm-hmm. uh Uh, the bit when she leaves the back door and Quibble follows, it's like without knowing that she's she knows Daring, you know what we the audience knows, her referencing the character as if she's real must be extra crazy sounding. Uh, you know, especially with the, you know Caballero on and then talking about Daring do it's like as if they were real. From Quibble's point of view, she's insane. And you should run away as fast as possible. Fair point. Um, I do love a good uh, dressing down of the the villain for making a bad plan for his overcomplicated plan. It's like, you know, he's just sitting there, blah, 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 and you're you you're wrong because this 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 and this. If you just did this, <laughs> I always like a good time when the when the kind of protagonists are just kind of razzing the the villain just like <laughs> it is not over complicated what are you talking about <laughs> just, yeah, like, just, um, i mean he has no fear because he thinks it's an adventure cation <coughs> which makes for some really really fun little bits like that see and then we come to the four hinge ponies leaving them alone, not even leaving one to watch the place. 
Um, they're either quite daft and, you know, looking out. But uh, you get what you pay for, and they, they don't seem like they were very expensive to hire. Um, you know, being fooled by a thrown button. Though, this comes back later um, when he said they led, Caballeron said that he, they led him to the temple. And so maybe part of that daftness was, okay, hench ponies, once we capture these people, these ponies, okay, we're going to give them an opportunity to escape. We'll do something really stupid like if you see like a button or you, you know they try and fool you, bite like crazy. Just just go for it. Just take the bait like crazy. And you know, spread out and let them basically run off. And then you know, they, you know, then they're supposed to follow them to the, you know, castle. And that's essentially what happened. It actually, this plan actually worked quite well. Um, if that yeah. was the case. But that may be giving Calvieron and his henchmen a little too much credit. But that would definitely be a workable plan. It's like, we're going to make them think we let them go. And we're going to follow them. Wherever they go, we, it will probably either take us to Daring Do, in which case we take the amulet from her, or they take us to the temple, in which case... We know where the temple is, and Daring Do is likely to follow, and we can take them again, and then hold them hostage and get Daring Do to show up with the amulet. So either way, I win. Um, yeah, not overcomplicated at all. <laughs> but it would work. <laughs> well, sometimes overcomplicated works, but yeah. Yeah. Um, that is true. So we get the water ride, we get the flips. It's like, that was crazy. You know, he starts to wake up to it, but he doesn't really wake up until they're, you know, he sees the giant green alligator thingy. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it looks kind of an alligator thingy. Its face is also the key, the, the, the amulet. That's the key to the, um, was it something sided treasure of Chico Masta or something like that? Uh, mm. we get smug Rainbow's wing around Daring Do is rebuffed. It's like, yeah, I know, uh, her. I know her. Yeah, She's like, that I that face know. is gonna be used and used. So many times. Yes, the the memes. You know, anytime you get a unique face, it's usually going to get memefied. Yes, and turn into bases so you can make your OC do the face. Yes. Um. Let's see. They uh. It was interesting in that the way they had them harnessed, that Quibble could just take his off. Rainbow's was like full harness. You know, it's like, you're not getting away. But his was like just a rope around his neck. It's like... Yeah, I'm out of here. Yeah, I mean, that was really incompetent rope tying, if that's the way you're, you're going to do that. <laughs> uh... Like the monster chasing the bad guys off. Team Rocket blasts off again. But we get the ninja snorkel, which is always nice. Not original or inspired, but it worked. Yeah. Yeah. And we get the lesson that you don't have to agree on everything to get along. Which is a good yeah, message yeah. for people in fandoms that uh, are viciously one way or the other. And if you Say anything yeah, different. that's heresy. Watching this episode, well, watching this episode, it kept on making me think of Ghostbusters for some reason. Not like the actual movie itself, but with the controversy, you know, that's behind it. 
yeah, you tend to, you know, it's trying to find common ground. Yeah. Yeah. But. I mean, I found the movie meh, I guess. I mean, it wasn't terrible and it wasn't good. You'll find, you'll find, <laughs> you usually find middle road meh seems to be the general consensus. People who are really big Ghostbusters fans tend to go towards the it's terrible sort of end of the spectrum. And much of the controversy wasn't necessarily about the movie itself. It was how things were handled and the way, yeah, a, you know, a terrible looking trailer was suddenly, oh, you just hate women. It's like, no, that was an awful trailer. You know. Yeah. And so, and sometimes these, you know, politically charged, you know, things like, it, you know, this is done because this, you know, not for, you know, legitimate reasons like this is the best way to write the story, but this is yeah. because we're trying to fulfill a quota that makes things, it, it leaves yeah. a sour taste in people's mouths, I think. Um, and a lot of times yeah. those can turn out bad because they're so focused on the message and not on that. I haven't seen it, but, you know, it does have yeah. that kind of message in it. That's going to irritate people. It's like, we're going to push political th opinions down your throat. It's like, I don't want that. Just be Ghostbusters. You, know, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to shout. Yeah. I, you know, just, you know. That's yeah, weird. there's something I wonder. Is Darren do the real name or A.K. Yearling? A.K. Yearling, I think, is the real name. Yeah, I mean, it's A.K. Yearling. Yeah, because other... Okay. I mean, she, it could be a pseudonym and Darren Do could be a real one, but you'd think somebody would remember somebody named Darren Do actually showing up, and that would be a thing. But I think it's a... It's a yeah. I think it's an Indiana Jones scenario where, you know... You know, Doctor uh, Doctor Henry Jones Jr. You know is that's what you know that's what he goes by when he's you know doing his you know archaeological work his you know that sort of thing and he goes by Indiana when he's actually out doing Indiana Jones thing. It's a you know it's an alter ego, but I think Daring Do is like that's 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 the fake name. Could be the other way around. Yeah. I would think people would remember that kind of name. Hey, I already knew that. That no, that pony does exist. I grew up with her. Yeah. But I think that's basically yeah. all I all I had on the on it. Although we did get him kind of talking over the credits, which was it was very very Fanny. It was not Fanny. That could go really well, really wrong in. Uh, in, in the British Isles, but fan-like in that he was like, you know, this is my original idea, don't steal. <laughs> yeah, then don't steal. This is 100% me. My original idea, don't steal. You know, and yeah, it was awkward. But I like how <laughs> Rainbow Dash had to cut him off just as the credit ends. And that, that's that's kind of a funny way to end it. It's like, yes, yes, we get it. Yes, yes, we get it. And <coughs> stop. Because the... Why are we stopping? Because why did you have to stop me? The credits were over. <laughs> oh. But uh, I do think that was... It was an okay episode. I imagine if I watched it a few more times, I'd pick up a few more bits and pieces. Yeah. But it was okay. It was a good message to, you know, you can like, you can both like something for completely different reasons, and that's okay. You're welcome to argue about it, but don't make that, you know, don't that, let that drive a wedge into your friendship. Yeah. Also, they are both complete and eggheads. That is true. <laughs> so much, so much shipping. So, not shipping. 
I yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't really looked into the fandom to see how much that's happening. Whether you know, if we're, if we're talking marble pie levels or just kind of, eh, it's kind of a thing. I I'm guessing it's more towards. It's kind of a thing, but it's not really much of a thing. Like it's not going to beat out by any means Soren Dash. I think that's I think that's her her biggest kind of male uh, partner in shipping. I'm hey, do sure. you think the next do you think the next episode's gonna be gonna be like in Griffin Stone like they did with that spike episode of the pets? Um I don't know. What's the name of the next episode? I don't know. Well, they could do that. I don't know that they will, though. Uh, and Alex just loved this episode. He thought it was the greatest ever. <laughs> well, I like the episode. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It wasn't like a you know, Crusaders of the Lost Mark good, and it wasn't you know, um, Spike at Your Service bad. It was, it was okay. It was an average, decent episode. I mean, if you really love Patton Oswalt, Spike, it was how do you better. feel? Yeah, like Spike, how do you feel that we only do episodes for you when we need filler? Or bad episodes. Hey, Megan, we... hey, fucking McCarthy. <laughs> Though we did get just get oh, uh, what's it called? Dragon? It's not Dragon Quest, is it? No. It's the the newest one with, with the one he's with Ember. I can't remember the name. Ember. The the name oh, of that yeah. episode. I can't remember what it was, but that was a good episode. That was a good spike it episode. Was. That was weird. It, it was. was. Ember was, was cute. It was a spike yeah. episode. It was good. Cats and dogs yeah. living together. Mass hysteria. But we'll have to wait and see how things go. But yeah, it was a nice standalone episode. Um, anything else? I don't think I have anything else uh, about this episode. I really want to talk about it. Was okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't really have anything either. All right. Well. If that's if that's all we got, then I'll uh, call that an episode. I suppose that's a that's a review of uh, Stranger Things. Yay! Than Fan, now 